Hello everyone. Welcome to the Blockchain News Club. Let's take a brief intro into today's crypto updates before going into the details. The Chamber of Digital Commerce aims to end the US SEC regulation by enforcement campaign against crypto. Gary Gensler has made a show of cracking down on crypto companies that haven't engaged in actual misconduct. When real fraud is taking place, he's nowhere to be seen. Ripple's chief legal officer Stuart Alderity dropped a hint that Ripple may move the SEC case to the U.S. Supreme Court should the current judge take the side of the SEC. The debate around XRP's usage continues as summary judgment in the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission lawsuit is awaited. Developers at XRP Ledger and Ripple Development Lab RippleX have proposed a new XRPL standard for a cross-chain bridge that would enable interoperability between different networks. Coinbase has stealthily changed its risk warning, once again fueling rumors that XRP will soon be back to trading on the largest U.S. crypto exchange. Before we dive deep into today's updates, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please hit the subscribe button. It will help us a lot. Crypto Body Takes Action Against U.S. SEC Chair Gary Gensler for Crypto Crackdown The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and its chair, Gary Gensler, are sued by the Chamber of Digital Commerce for their regulation by enforcement campaign, which threatens the U.S. digital assets market and investors. To stop the SEC from cracking down on crypto in the U.S., the Chamber of Digital Commerce filed an amicus brief in the SEC v. Wahi case, arguing that the case unfairly called several crypto assets securities. Chamber of Digital Commerce, with help from Winston and Strawn LLP, filed an amicus brief in SEC v. Wahi. This case should be dismissed as it represents an unprecedented expansion of the SEC's campaign of regulation through enforcement. The Chamber of Digital Commerce has doubts about how much power the SEC has over cryptocurrency assets. Also, if trades of crypto assets on the secondary market should be seen as security transactions under the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. Even though the SEC and other regulators don't have the power to make rules and are waiting for the U.S. Congress to pass crypto regulations, they have gone ahead with lawsuits and other enforcement actions. The SEC and other U.S. regulators have started a crackdown on the cryptocurrency market in the U.S. but Coinbase, Paxos, and the Chamber of Digital Commerce have all agreed to fight against the SEC's forced control over cryptocurrencies. SEC has also sued the Ripple and Grayscale, and those cases are expected to end in the next quarter. Grayscale and Ripple say they have a strong case against the SEC. Gary Gensler's SEC is playing a game, but not the one you think. On February 13, a federal judge put on hold the cases brought against former FTX CEO Sam Bankman fried by the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. The breaking news that the SEC was suing crypto firm Paxos for making Binance's stablecoin, Binance USD, was all over the news and social media. The problem is that the Paxos story came out on the same day that Bankman case frieds was put off by U.S. District Judge Kevin Costell. And the stablecoin debate that followed took attention away from that very important change, making many people miss what should have been the bigger news. Bankman fried has been living at his parents' mansion in Palo Alto, California, since he pleaded not guilty to stealing billions of dollars from his failed exchange and paid a $250 million bond. He can relax by the pool and play League of Legends as much as he wants, while millions of FTX customers who lost billions of dollars wait for justice and compensation. You could say that the Paxos Binance USD lawsuit and Bankman cases frieds being put on hold at the same time are just a coincidence. Even prosecutors said it made sense to put off these lawsuits because there was a lot of overlap between them. But both Bankman fried and SEC chair Gary Gensler seem to like it a lot. Court cases have always used ways to put things off. Putting time and distance between the crime and the person who did it is a well-known tactic. And let's not forget that it took two months just to get Bankman fried from the Bahamas to the US and charge him officially there. The real story is, unfortunately, much more sneaky. In a settlement with the SEC announced on February 9, Kraken would have to shut down its crypto staking service in the US and pay a $30 million fine. The news and what it means for crypto users in the US was, of course, all over the internet. Brian Armstrong, the founder and CEO of Coinbase, tweeted on February 12 that his company would fight back. He said, Coinbase's staking services are not securities. If we have to, we will gladly defend this in court. Words of encouragement. But it's all a waste of time. Gensler is a magician, and his crackdown on cryptocurrencies is being done under the guise of protecting investors. This is part of the trick. Gensler said, today's action should make it clear to the market that staking as a service providers need to register and offer full, fair, and honest disclosure and investor protection. 
it has nothing to do with protecting investors. It's a way to keep the public and the media's attention on the cryptocurrency as security story while Gensler tries to get us to forget that he met with Bankman Fried in the months before the FTX disaster and did nothing to stop it. It has been said that Gensler met with Bankman Fried before the FTX collapse, but not much has been done to look into this. In March 2022, the SEC chair had an unusual 45-minute Zoom call, during which they talked about a new trading platform, among other things. So, a lot of fraud and money laundering happened not only while Gensler was in charge, but right under his nose. And right now, he should be under a lot of scrutiny to explain how he missed the fact that FTX was about to fall apart. Bankman Fried has since been charged with wire fraud, campaign finance violations, and conspiracy to launder money. Even though Gensler was connected to Bankman Fried, Congress should ask him some hard questions about why he didn't stop such a disaster. But this part of the story isn't the center of attention. Gensler and the SEC are doing everything they can to keep the attention off of that. Kraken Staking Services. The Binance USD stablecoin from Paxos. And what's new? Duquan. The SEC has suddenly found time to charge the founder of Terraform Labs with orchestrating a multi-billion dollar crypto asset securities fraud. But in May 2022, Terra Luna and the Terra USD token both went down. So why is it only now bringing these charges? At best, the recent crackdowns on regulations are the result of the SEC trying to make up for its past mistakes, which go back much further than FTX and Terra. At worst, Gensler is trying to get us to forget that he met with Bankman Fried in 2022. He wants us to forget that he is either dishonest or incompetent. We should keep in mind that Quan is still free. So is Bankman Fried. Still, millions of small investors lost everything they had saved up in their whole lives. Ripple may walk through door and slam it shut in SEC case, Ripple CTO says. Yassine Mubarak, the founder and managing member of Desire Capital, has taken to Twitter to respond to a recent tweet by David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple and co-creator of the XRP ledger. He brought up Schwartz's recent comment that they, presumably meaning Ripple, might be tempted to walk through a door and shut it behind them. On February 21, Twitter user Mr. Huber 2 replied to a recent tweet by Ripple's chief legal officer Stuart Alderity. This got the conversation going. In that post, he gave a hint that Ripple might take the SEC case to the U.S. Supreme Court if the current judge rules in favor of the SEC. Alderity wrote on Twitter that four of the regulators' last five cases in the Supreme Court have already been lost. Mr. Huber, a Twitter user, thinks that Alderity was threatening SEC Chair Gary Gensler in this way to agree to the terms proposed by Ripple. This would give the fintech giant a clear edge over everyone else and a unique advantage. Huber thinks that if Alderity doesn't mean this, he means that Ripple will take away his authority over crypto by beating the SEC in the Supreme Court. Here is where David Schwartz chimed in to say that Ripple can't win unless the whole cryptocurrency space wins. He also said that Ripple will always want everyone in the space to win if we can. Then, Ripple's CTO sent out a tweet that left Yassine Mubarak a little confused. Schwartz wrote that his company could be put in a situation where they would be tempted to walk through a door and slam it shut behind them. He said that he doesn't want Ripple to do this, but he can't say for sure that it won't. Momerick said that this tweet was kind of scary and gave two possible explanations. In the first one, Ripple will walk through the door, shut it, and leave XRP holders behind. The second is that Ripple and XRP go through the door, but the rest of the crypto space is shut out. It is hard to know exactly what Schwartz meant here. But based on what Ripple's executives have said before, this could mean that they will take the case to the Supreme Court or that they will only end the lawsuit if XRP is recognized as an asset that is not a security. XRP lawyer explains SEC's flaw over Ripple payments. In the lawsuit between Ripple and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the on-demand liquidity service has been talked about for a long time. In the last few years, Ripple has only used XRP for cross-border payments, which some say is not the same as selling it as an investment but rather using it as a payment tool. As the XRP crypto community waits for the summary judgment in the SEC case, people are talking more and more about how likely it is that Ripple will win. On the other hand, the SEC stepped up its crackdown on crypto players, which could last for a few more weeks. The SEC recently said that businesses that hold assets for fund managers should have to follow stricter rules. This is likely to bring about another change. This will include keeping track of crypto assets. This will make it harder to do business in the US. The lawyer for the people who own XRP, John Deaton, said again that the SEC's argument about XRP's use in the on-demand liquidity service is wrong. In response to the SEC's Daubert motion, which mentioned this, Deaton said it was wrong to call XRP holders underwriters. In its motion, 
the SEC said that people who used the XRP on demand liquidity service were acting as underwriters because they sold XRP back into the public markets right away. The attorney reacted, saying, This underwriter issue is what many fail to recognize and why I sued SEC. XRP Ledger proposes cross chain bridge to increase network and token utility. Developers at XRP Ledger and Ripple Development Lab RippleX have come up with a new XRPL standard for a cross-chain bridge that would allow different networks to work together. The XRPL standard gives developers specifications and rules for building applications on the XRP Ledger. This makes sure that all applications are compatible and can talk to each other across the network. The proposed standard, which was posted on GitHub, would let tokens from one blockchain be locked in a smart contract on the XRP ledger while an equal number of tokens are issued on another blockchain. This would increase the number of ways the XRP ledger could be used and the number of people who use it. The proposal spells out how transactions can be made on the XRP ledger so that tokens can move between the XRP ledger and the sidechains that are connected to it. Sidechains are separate chains that work next to a mainnet or parent blockchain. In the proposed standards, eight types of transactions have been set up to make sure that tokens can move around in a safe and efficient way. But the developers pointed out some problems that might happen if the proposal is fully put into place. One disadvantage was that it was much harder to deal with things like rising fees, failed transactions, and servers falling behind. Realist XRP trends again as Coinbase changes risk disclosure, rally imminent. Coinbase has changed its risk warning in a sneaky way which has led to more rumors that XRP will soon be back on the largest U.S. cryptocurrency exchange. A new line in the risk warning says that the exchange won't delist cryptocurrencies that the SEC considers securities unless a court ruling backs up the regulator's request. We may determine not to remove a particular crypto asset from Coinbase spot market even if the SEC or another regulator alleges that the crypto asset is a security. Coinbase also said on Tuesday that it won't delist anything until a final court decision is made about how to classify that crypto asset. The change in the risk warning could make the decision to relist XRP on Coinbase much more likely. After all, Coinbase stopped selling XRP in January 2021 because the SEC was suing Ripple Labs and there hadn't been a court decision yet. The move upset a lot of people in the XRP community, especially since the exchange had already done a lot of research and talked to the SEC before listing any asset. Even though the price of XRP had already dropped 60% after the SEC complaint on December 22, 2020, it dropped another 30% after Coinbase took it off their site the next week. This shows how much Coinbase changes the price of a cryptocurrency. The price jump after a listing is also called the Coinbase effect, and this is what the XRP community is hoping for right now. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for regular updates in the blockchain community.